California suffers through an unprecedented drought. More than 70% of California is currently dealing with extreme or exceptional drought conditions. The governor ordering the strictest crackdown on water use in the state's history. We have to pull together and save water in every way we can. But what happens here matters to every working American. So we are heading into the fourth year of drought. This year, is remarkably bad. We've got over 400,000 acres of fields fallowed. We're gonna have to confront some pretty harsh realities here, assuming that this drought continues in California. Climate change looms over California's future in the form of increasingly severe weather. Mother Nature is just giving us a wild ride. A declining snowpack. We're standing on dry grass and we should be standing in five feet of snow. And ongoing drought. Los Angeles' water system was designed to support a booming population, yet had unintended consequences. Aqueducts were built to transport water from hundreds of miles away, and while they provided the region with an imported water supply, they also had negative environmental and economic costs. Meanwhile, the city's land was sealed with pavement and equipped with storm drains which quickly purge rainwater from streets to the ocean. Rainwater, which could supply nearly half of LA's current water needs. We never intended them to be destructive, but as we now understand the ecosystem better and ecosystem function, we understand that we've created a machine that is billions and billions of dollars a year being spent in unwittingly destructive activity. This is a crisis. Our agencies face spiraling costs as they seek to protect us from the extreme impacts of climate change. Now to 2WEB's weather forecast for Burke, New South Wales. To all our farmers listening, unfortunately there is no rain in the forecast this week. Six years without significant rain, times must be tough, but hang in there, rain has to come soon. Starting in the late 90s, Australia suffered the beginning of what was later called the Millennium Drought. This environmental crisis severely impacted public health and quality of life over 12 long years. It's quite striking how similar the United States and Australia are culturally, physically, economically, and having experienced the kind of crisis that the Australians did during the Millennium Drought, I think is incredibly instructive and important for us to learn from and take home. Looking for answers, tree people saw an opportunity. They understood that Los Angeles shared a climate and lifestyle similar to many Australian cities. The regional head of the Environmental Protection Agency said, why don't you bring a delegation of us to Australia? We need to see this stuff. Tree people assembled a delegation of agency partners and policymakers to learn how Australians responded to their climate challenges. California just went through the three driest record years in state history. This trip gives us the ability to jump ahead so that we can get to the solutions and not through the steep learning curve that they had to go through. Desalination plants were built, but they were not the answer this technology proved to be energy inefficient, harmful to the environment, and expensive. At the same time, Australia was suffering from extreme heat. Nearly 200 people died on a single day. The drought also had devastating impacts on the country's urban forests, whose tree canopies were key to combating heat and keeping citizens safe and shaded. In Australia, there is no natural disaster that kills more people than heat. Well, water storage levels are still dwindling in many parts of the country. Melbourne has set a daily personal water use target of 155 litres per person. Australian officials understood that the way to survive was to empower the public. The government was successful by deploying incentive programs for rain tanks and cisterns. The government does have a rebate program whereby they install a tank that's over 2,000 litres and connect it to toilet or laundry they can get from $800 to $1,500 back. And drought tolerant landscapes. We've become smarter in how we do our landscape designs. In addition, they engaged and educated the public to adopt widespread water conservation practices to help them achieve ambitious targets. It's about understanding what your specific uses are, what your needs are, and then matching a particular quality of water 
for that use. We set our pipes up from our washing machine so when the washing machine emptied it went straight out onto the garden. In the last 12 months we put rainwater tanks in under our decking at home. In Melbourne now we're about 20% of properties have a rainwater tank. Talking to young people on the street today we thought I gotta capture this so we're out talking to young people, old people just walking down the street. Do you save water at home? Yeah, definitely try to. I think How it's do really you do important. it? Um, just like minimizing shower times and trying to get a washing machines and all that that have like low energy use and water use. For a while we had a timer that the government gave out that you could stick on the shower wall like an egg timer. We have a bucket in our shower and then we use that to water the plants. Everybody has a story of how they rose to the occasion. Use of rainwater tanks, use of dual flush toilets, use of high efficiency taps and water fixtures has significantly cut the amount of water that's being consumed by individual households. Normally you, you'd, be, you'd be targeting about 250 litres per person per day. However today in Adelaide we're really looking at about 150 litres per person on average now. Whether it was through straight on conservation, through how to capture their rainwater, how to change their landscaping, whatever worked for them, government helped them in one way or another. Cities responded to the crisis, first by saving valuable heritage trees using recycled water, then densely planting major streets with trees and rehabilitating green spaces to become public cooling centers. There isn't any more important asset from a green infrastructure perspective than the trees. Doubling the tree canopy, we can decrease urban temperatures by four to five degrees C. That's going to save lives. Australia survived its drought and is stronger today than ever. The country learned that it didn't need to compromise quality of life because of drought. Australia established new practices to thrive in its new normal of extreme heat and a water insecure climate. Everybody came together to look for a solution. We all realised that we had to pull our weight and do something. That has not stopped. The positive impacts of Australia's smart investments are still influencing culture today. Water use is down dramatically even years after the drought ended. We've actually expanded our ability to be resilient into the future. Climate scientists predict long-term water insecurity and increased frequency of severe heat and El Nino flooding events in Los Angeles' future. And so I think what it tells us in Los Angeles is that we have to be absolutely prepared to be able to collaboratively work together and solve these very sort of catastrophic problems that are facing not just us now, but Australia in the past. Los Angeles can prosper in the face of drought by gleaning from the lessons learned in Australia. Using what was proven there, Los Angeles can prepare at the government and community levels to successfully adapt to a new climate reality. One of the most powerful places that foundations, donors, philanthropists can invest right now is in helping the systems change from destructive to regenerative. Everything from recycling wastewater, picking up stormwater, running it through treatment wetlands, running it through treatment plants. It's a whole system of solutions that is really, really encouraging. Tree People is rallying agencies and mobilizing residents to take the lessons from Australia and apply them at homes, schools, and neighborhoods across LA. You can join us to ensure a secure local water supply and healthy tree canopy for our city's climate resilient future. The people need a challenge and they will rise to that. And I really believe for more information, visit treepeople.org slash Australia.